Hello and welcome back to The Simplicity Diaries with me, Kim John Payne. Gosh, so glad you could join us again this week and carve out this little, this little space for these funny little podcasts. This week, I've been talking to some parents about the steps, in fact, three steps to independent play. The question often comes up for uh, parents of how much should I play with my child? You know, uh, how much and how long should I play with them? Is it healthy? I really want them to be able to play independently, but I, but um, I'm not sure, you know, quite what to do in this situation. Well, it's a very understandable uh, question. And we want our children to be able to play independently. And I think the reason a lot of us have this instinct that that it's a good thing that they do this is that when they play independently, a child can, can kind of level down, so to speak. They can sink down into deep creative play. And deep creative play, I would say, is perhaps more needed now than than it ever has before with all that's all that's going on in the in the world um, and all the children have to assimilate and all this sort of sensory and social complexities that that surround them because play is i don't know it's it's digestion it, it's it's being able to take the world around me and uh, and at times rather um, random and perhaps even fragmented images um, and experiences of the day going here and going there and getting in the car and doing this and then that and it's it's many different um, different things that a child has to cope with in their day so that when they settle down to play it is um, it's, it's a time where they can pull it all together. It's a time when they can play it out. You know, many of us know, uh, you know, when our children have scary experiences or real fun experiences or anything in between, they, when they settle down to play, they often start to either draw it, play it, speak it, uh, dress in costumes like it. It's the way they make sense of the world. And I, I think most of us have got a pretty good instinct um, about this and we value it and good for us, right? So here's one way to help a child move into that deeper creative play and be able to do that independently without needing to have us beside them. And the reason I think um, having us beside them the whole time is uh, one way, but it's but it's it's only one way. Uh, is that I think the problem with it, if that's what we, we do a lot, is that children when they're talking to us, interacting with us, that's good. That's social play, and that's that's lovely, and it's connecting but it keeps them in that chatty realm, if you know what I mean. It keeps them in that relational realm and they don't sink down, down, down into that deep digestive play. So one way to achieve this, when a child is wanting to be started off in play, um, in an, in a, um, another podcast I called this siphoning play, but we're just taking another step in this now, is, is to move from being in the house to in the neighborhood to then in the town. It's like three concentric circles. We're moving a little further away, but we're still connected. We're still there. Now let's back up. In the house means we're sitting right beside a child. You know, we're helping them organize their project, their construction material, their toys, their whatever it is, we're, we're in the house. We're right there with them, in their house, metaphorically. Of course, we're in the house, but, but metaphorically, close to their, their play intention. And we're helping them often just gather stuff together, but they're also chatting to us and so on. 
and we're interacting. It's quite interactive and it's lovely. Then after a few minutes, five, ten minutes, uh, give or take, hopefully not much longer, um, and perhaps even shorter once they get used to this, we move to being in the neighborhood. Now in the neighborhood has got to do with uh, being able to just sit back on the sofa a little bit and not and, and just start dialing back the amount of words, start dialing back even the amount of syllables. So it just ends with, mm hmm, all oh, right, oh look, yeah, gosh, all that, you know, so that we start pulling back. And if a child wants to talk to us, that's perfectly fine. Uh, and they'll keep up their lovely little, their, their lovely little chirps and cheeps. But it, if we start to dial back how much we talk, it, you can almost sense a child starting to pull their connection down into their play. And once they start moving into that creative space, we can go from the neighborhood to the town. And what I mean by that is that we might just quietly move off and, um, and we might start folding some clothes. We might start doing a, a, a little tidy up. By the way, if we do a tidy up, make it, make it slow. Don't, make it, don't, don't bring too much movement turbulence into, in, into the room. Uh, not busy, busy going round and round. Just slow it down just a, just a little bit. Not, not so that it's weird, you know, but just a little bit. Um, slow it down. Uh, it's a great time for getting um, supper ready, getting that prepped. Uh, it's a great time for a little tidy up, but um, not a not a phone. It, it, the I don't know, you know, it's it's just the moment we look at a phone, our children sense our attention is no longer in the town. It's over the hills and far away, and they'll pop right out of their creative play and um and want to um interact again so um if 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 you want your child to stay in deep creative play avoid phones avoid laptops because our children we're no longer in the town we, we've gone and that will almost sound a little uh, alarm bell for them and they'll pop right up and right out and then we've got to start all over again so this is a way that, um, to, to, yes, have independent play on one hand, but also still have that lovely connection on the other, because the connection was a close, was in the house, but we're still connected when we're in the neighborhood and we're still connected when we're in the town. Now, if our child gets to a point where something frustrating has happened or they really want to show you something, then pop back. But if possible, um, stay in the neighborhood. Um, you might need to get come in close again and sort out a frustration with some scissors that won't cut properly or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and that's fine. But as quickly as possible, move into the neighborhood. Or if possible, stay in the neighborhood and just come on over and they want to show you what they've done. And, oh, that's lovely. That's, that's fine too. But... Um, don't get in there. Don't don't sort of move in and start filling the space with um, with too many words. All right. So that is the three steps to independent play, but also connected play as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, as always, I hope that's helpful. And of course, if anyone wants to connect with me, if if you would like to speak personally about some of the conundrums that are coming up in your family, don't hesitate to go right to the Simplicity Parenting website, connect, uh, click on uh, connect or consult, I think it is, with Kim, and that will lead you right to the page to request a consultation in my little family coaching practice. Okay, that's it for now. Bye-bye. <music>